So when the price of commodity is very low, or perhaps when a particular product or service is offered at a low price with low perceived with low perceived benefit, then we say the strategy developed at that point in time is a no frills strategy. And this actually takes the first position. Therefore, this strategy should be able to attract customers who are price conscious of a particular commodity. There are certain customers that are very conscious about the value that is placed on a particular product or service in terms of price. So when they are conscious about this price of commodities, they wouldn't go for commodities that command higher prices. Rather, they go for commodities that command lower prices. And as a matter of fact, such price conscious customers are always happy to buy a particular product at lowest possible price. And this ultimately will bring about a low perceived benefit. Generally, this strategy has been used by low-cost airlines, which offer a basic service for a low price. And with a no-free strategy, automatically, customers are able to have a better understanding such that when they buy a particular product or service, they are likely to get viewer benefits based on the fact that the product actually commands lower prices in the market. And the benefit they will get from this will be very, very low than rival product or services in the same market. That is what we have in no phrase strategy. And that is position one. So in summary, what this strategy is talking about is that it is a strategy that is commonly developed for the purpose of offering a typical product or service at a low price and with low perceived benefit, especially those price conscious customers. Then let's go to second strategy, that is low price strategy, and that is position two. When we talk of low price strategy, with a low price strategy, then customers are able to perceive that the product or service will give average or normal benefits and it is not regarded as a low quality product. So the price in this case is very low compared with similar products in the same market or industry. So taking or adopting this strategy automatically, various products or services that will be sold in such market or industry will definitely command low price. So which means that the price of the commodity will be very, very lower. And this does not mean that the quality of the product will equally be lower. No, the quality will definitely be improved upon. But what is lower in this case is the price of the commodity. And the belief of the general customers or consumer is that such product or service will give what is called average or normal benefit. Even despite the fact that those products or services are sold at lower prices. So only the lowest cost production in the market can implement this business strategy successfully. And if a company that is not least cost producer tries to implement a low price strategy, there will be a continual threat that the least cost producer will copy the same strategy and other prices that are even lower. So only the least cost producer could actually survive in this particular situation as far as low price strategy is concerned. Then we have differentiation strategy. We have differentiation strategy. This is actually contained in the fourth position. A differentiation strategy is often based on making a particular product or service appear to offer more benefit than rival products or services. So we have many business organizations that often try to differentiate their own particular product so that they are made to be unique and distinct or differentiated from other products that are being sold in the same market or industry. So there are several techniques that a particular firm can take into consideration in an attempt to differentiate its own product. It could be in terms of packaging, it could be in terms of branding, it could be a form of advertisement and what have you. All these are some of the tools that can be developed for the purpose of differentiating one firm's product from other firm's products that are being traded, that is bought and sold in that particular market or industry. 
However, where various ways by which deflation can be achieved in terms of products or services which may have different features such that the rival products do not offer exactly the same benefit. So we have many companies who may also promote the perception that their products or services are much better in quality than other products or services offered in the same market or industry. Then we have what we call hybrid strategy. That is contained in the third position. Hybrid strategy. A hybrid strategy basically involves selling a product or service which combines the following elements or features. One, higher than average benefit to customers. Those products or services that actually combine higher benefits which are more than average to their customers, they are actually involved or in what is called hybrid strategy or perhaps a below average selling price when a particular product is sold below average selling price then that strategy is also called hybrid strategy so there are two major combination of factors or features that characterize the hybrid strategy one we have higher than average benefit to customers when a particular product command higher benefit than average to a particular customer in the market or industry is actually said to be an hybrid strategy or perhaps when a particular product commands a price that is below average in the market or industry this is also called an hybrid strategy however to be successful this business strategy mainly requires low cost production that is there is a need to reduce the total cost of production in terms of human and material resources that are traceable to the production process of certain goods and services so when products are made available on a lower cost of production then automatically that will be able to command lower price which will bring about a larger benefit on the part of a typical customer so when a, a strategy requires low cost production then the ability to provide larger benefit to the vinyl consumer so this strategy tries to achieve a mix between a low price strategy and a differentiation strategy in other words IB strategy is a combination of low price strategy on one hand and differentiation strategy on the other hand and finally we have what we call focused differentiation strategy focused differentiation strategy this is basically contained in the fifth position in the strategic clock so by this strategy we simply revert to a strategy that is taken for the purpose of selling a particular product that offers above average benefit for a higher than average price for a typical product or services so in this particular category the products are often strongly branded as premium products so that their high price can be justified at a given point in time the products sold in this particular market or industry have been highly branded and as a matter of fact they have been differentiated from other similar products existing in the same industry or market and this high branding put in place on that particular product in terms of physical features will have actually justified a higher price that is placed or higher value that is placed on that particular product so we have Garnet restaurants and Ferrari sports cars which are best examples of products that are sold using this particular business strategy so they have been able to you know brand this product we are talking about here and because of the product command higher prices in the market or industry so the high branding they have actually done to this product in terms of physical features have equally justified higher value that are placed on this product therefore business strategies on the clock will also fail at a point in time if appropriate strategies are not developed and as a matter of fact there is a need for the right strategy to be put in place for the purpose of achieving certain goals and objectives upon which the firms are actually established at a given point in time 
So let's give a concluding remarks about the strategic clock. So we have actually seen that strategic clock has been regarded as a particular strategy that is often developed for the purpose of achieving competitive advantage on the part of a typical firm. And here we have identified the five major broad of categories, five major broads or categories of strategies that are often developed in strategic clock. And each business strategy is said to be market facing. In other words, the strategy of this business actually aims to meet the needs of the customers at a given point in time. That is, the strategies are developed for the purpose of creating value as well as meeting the overall needs and expectations of the customers at a particular period of time. Or better still, a large proportion of potential customers in the market. The strategy is not only designed to meet the needs and expectations of, of the existing customers, rather it is also developed for the purpose of meeting the needs and expectations of a large potential customers of a particular product or service within a particular market or industry. Therefore, it is very important to understand the critical success factors for each of the positions we have identified on the clock. In particular, what exactly does above average benefit mean? There are certain, you know, words or terms we made use of below average, above average, and what have you in terms of benefits or price as the case may be. So when we really analyze each of these business strategy, we'll be able to clearly understand the critical success factors for each of the positions on the strategic clock. And this will really enhance our understanding about what below average, above average, in terms of price and benefit are all about. However, a useful exercise is to think about any product or service with which you are familiar with and a company that provides such products or service. So the market should be competitive such that there will be many buyers and sellers in the market and each of the buyers and sellers will not have any power or influence to determine the price of the commodity in their own favor. Therefore, the market should be seen to be competitive in nature. So having established this, then you try to describe the business strategy that the company has for its product or service using the strategic clock as a basis for analyzing business strategies. We also need to remember the fact that the benefit of its product or service do not have to be different product design or different product quality as the case may be. Rather, there are other features of a product or service that could give them better value in terms of the perceptions or opinions of the customer, such as fast speed of delivery, availability in stock, convenience of purchase, a better after sale service, or a product guarantee as the case may be. All these are other features that could give better value to a particular customer based on their various opinions or perceptions about a given product or service. So in this case, benefits do not have to be real in the real sense of it. What matters is whether customer believes that a product offers more benefit or otherwise at a given point in time. And branding and advertising can create extra benefit in the perception of customers, especially when they are embarked upon by a typical business organization or firm as the case may be in a particular industry or market. The branding and advertisement will go a long way in creating value as well as competitive advantage on the part of a firm at the expense of other firms or rival competitors within the same industry or market. That is just a concluding remarks of what strategic clock is all about.